What's up, Internet? Welcome to Weirdo Reviews. I'm Jonathan Sim, your favorite movie weirdo, and it is time for an interview. Life in a Day 2020 is a documentary that is entirely crowdsourced, meaning that it was all made up of footage that people sent from all around the world on filmed on one day, July 25th, 2020. I got the opportunity to speak with the director on this project, Kevin McDonald. Uh, he has directed many films in the past, like Whitney and the original Life in a Day, and he has another movie coming out called The Mauritanian. So here is the interview with Kevin McDonald. How are you today? Good. Am I in the right place? Are you expecting me? Uh, yes, I am expecting <laughs> you. <laughs> I never quite know why you're popping up in the wrong in the wrong place. Where where are you? Uh, I'm in New York City right now. Okay, well, where are you? Where are you? I'm in London. London, nice, awesome. Yeah. So uh, I just want to quickly introduce myself. I'm Jonathan Sim. I am a hey, film Jonathan. critic, and I'm going to be interviewing today you today about your career and uh, also um, just some of your upcoming projects. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what inspired you to make a sequel to Life in a Day? We talked about making a sequel to the original film right from pretty much the time we made the first one because we enjoyed it so much and it was such a kind of novel idea at the time. But, you know, as with a lot of things, you talk about it and nobody ever does anything to make it happen. And then last year in March, Jack Arbuthnot, the producer, um, got in touch with me and said, you know, we have to do it this year. This is the 10th anniversary. If we don't do it now, we'll never do it. And I said to him, yeah, but what about COVID? Isn't that going to make it very boring? Because COVID was quite new then. And he said, no, no, it's all going to be over by June. COVID's going to be, it's not going to be a problem. Little did we know that uh, we'd be here, you know, almost a year later and still much, very much in the, in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it didn't start out being a film that was, you know, going to document the extraordinary year that, 2020 was but I think that's one of the things that it does you know obviously it's there's quite a lot about COVID in it um both both kind of as a background presence but also you know directly addressed and there's also obviously a lot about the politics that's going on in the world the protest the BLM all of these things are very much you know presences in 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 the story of that day the 25th of July 2020. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's honestly been the most crazy year that ever. And uh, now, what was it like to work with Ridley Scott on this film? Uh, well, you know, Ridley is not really a documentary maker. Um, I think he, he, he was involved in documentaries when he was like 19, he told me once. He did, he came to New York and he worked with uh, Leacock and Pennebaker, who was like the, the original direct cinema inventors you know um wow. but his career obviously went then in a totally different direction and, and he makes films that are very far from documentary uh but having said that you know he loved the first film and he he is a real uh, uh, you know um fan of of the sequel too and he um you know watches cuts he sends you notes and uh he helped a great deal just by doing a call out on YouTube to encourage people to take part. So he's a kind of godfather to the whole thing. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, all right. Now, um, what do you hope that audiences pick up from watching Life in a Day 2020? Uh, I think that people will, first of all, be amazed by the diversity of this film. The, the, it covers pretty much the whole globe. There are 192 countries sent in material. Um, there are, you know, little babies through to ancient old people. It's pretty much all human life is there. And that's what's amazing about it. And you see things that you would, you know, never see normally in a documentary. You see somebody um, splitting up from their partner uh, live on the camera. You see somebody proposing to their girlfriend and uh, they get rejected by their girlfriend. Um, you see people dealing with the death of loved ones because of COVID. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's the breadth of the experience that takes in and the, and, and the range of the places you go. You know, within the first 30 seconds, you're in uh, Mongolia, out of Mongolia with a family milking their cows at dawn. Then you're in Indonesia with a transgender woman. Then you're in um, 
uh, 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 then you're in Nigeria in a hospital. You know, it's just like bam, bam, bam. You're all around the world, and there's something sort of just jaw dropping with that, and it makes you feel, wow, everybody in the world is kind of the same. You know, the things that seem to separate us are actually pretty minor and in the background. It's the similarities that you really that you really see. Yeah, of course. Yeah, one of my favorite things about this documentary and the first one is how it just shows this incredible range of human experiences, but how mm. it all feels so similar and relatable, like in the long run. Mm. And I mean, like many people, they are just starting out in the film industry and uh, from the perspective of someone who's found success like you, what advice mm. would you give to filmmakers and documentarians who are just beginning their journey? Well, I think probably the best advice you can give to people is not to pay too much attention to the rules. You know, right. it's it's novelty that really counts. It's doing something different. It's it's uh, uh, surprising people, telling a different kind of story, telling a story that hasn't been told before. Um, you know, people can get hung up on technique and ultimately technique is not the most important thing. It's having something to say and saying something new. And, and I, I can say that you have definitely outdone yourself with that and especially with <laughs> this movie. Uh, now, according to my top secret confidential sources, which are definitely not Wikipedia, uh, <laughs> you have another movie coming out soon called The Mauritanian. Um, yes. Tell us a little bit about that. So that's a very different movie. That's a feature film. Um, which I met shot last year um, in South Africa and in Mauritania. Mauritania, for those of you who don't know, which is almost everyone, um, Mauritania is the fifth largest country in Africa. It comprises a, a large portion of the Sahara Desert. Uh, it's a, a below Morocco and above Senegal. And this is the story of a man from there who was uh, sent to Guantanamo Bay. He was kidnapped. For, um, by the American government and taken to Guantanamo and spent 14 years there, not charged with any crimes. And it's the story of how he survives. And he's an extraordinary character. The real man is an extraordinary, beautiful human being. And uh, the character is played by Tahar Rahim, who's a French Algerian actor who some of you might know uh, from um, the, 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 the wonderful Jack Odriard film, A Prophet. And uh, it also features uh, Jodie Foster, the legend of the screen that is Jodie Foster, uh, doing her first movie in quite a while, uh, playing uh, his defense lawyer and the uh, unsurpassable Benedict Cumberbatch as the prosecution lawyer and Shailene Woodley, um, who is just the most beautiful human being, uh, mm -hmm. as another lawyer. And so it's a star-studded cast and it's a, a really uh, beautiful and moving film um, about, a, about a subject that is quite tricky, but I think it's handled in a way which is a very personal and very, very human and, and it will leave you with a smile on your face. Wow. Well, I'm excited to see it now, uh, but out of everything in your filmography, do you have a favorite movie that you have directed and why? Well, it's probably the Mauritanian. Wow. <laughs> I think it's I think it's uh, uh, maybe not going to be to everyone's taste, but I think it's the best the best one that I've made, and uh, the one I'm proudest of, particularly because it was a very hard film to to get together, and the cast are superlative. You know, there's another word for it. They really are extraordinarily good in the movie. So yeah, that that that's that's probably it. And and uh, you know, most directors feel like me you know you feel like you know you don't really want to look at, back at your old work and uh, uh, <laughs> uh and uh when you do you're a bit embarrassed by it but in this instance this film that i've just made i i i, I urge everyone to watch it okay and uh well i want to ask do you have a favorite movie of all time uh Wow, that's the, one of the hardest, that's one of the hardest questions ever. Well, I have a personal connection to a movie that is certainly one of my favorite movies, which is, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Powell and Pressburger, who are a pair of British filmmakers from the 1940s and 50s, and they made films which are sort of now regarded as classics, 
a matter of life and death, the life and death of Colonel Blimp, the Red Shoes, a film about ballet. And they are Martin Scorsese's favorite filmmakers. And um, my grandfather was one of them. And uh, oh. so there's a film of theirs called The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, which uh, to me is certainly the best British film ever made. And one of the one of the greatest films, um, full stop. And, and uh, I look at it with awe and think, wow, that's, um, I'll never live up to that. Well, I mean, well, I'll, I'll be uh, looking, looking that up right after this interview. Great, really nice and, to talk to you. Right, and uh, well, one final question. Oh, okay. Me. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to just, uh, I like to end my interviews with a little bit of fun. So I wanna ask you just very, very nice and formal question. Do you like magic tricks? <laughs> yes, and I'm hoping you're going to share me one. I, I do know how to show you one. Would you like to see one? Absolutely, 100%. Okay, awesome. So right here I have a deck of cards. It's closed. And what I want you to do is, out of a 52-card deck, name any card you want. I have to tell you what it is, what the name is? Yeah, sure. Name yeah. Name. Okay, Eight of Clubs. Eight of Clubs. Are you sure or do you want to change your mind? No, I'm totally sure. You can change your mind if you want. No, I don't want to. Okay, eight of clubs. You're, you're absolutely sure. I'm absolutely sure. Okay. Now, in this deck, I made a prediction about which card you would select. Because in this deck, there is one card that is face down, the eight of clubs. Ooh. That was impressive. Thank you. I don't, I don't, why, why are you working as a as, as a film journalist? You should be you should be in Las Vegas. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm working on both at the same time. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, to everyone watching, Life in a Day 2020 premieres February 1st, 2021, at the Sundance Film Festival, and it will be available on YouTube on February 6th. Check it out. It is a wonderful documentary. Now. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me today for this interview and um, have a great day. And you. Thank you. Nice to talk to you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right. That's it. So what did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? What did you think? Uh, whatever you thought, let me know down in the comment section below. Like this video. Subscribe if you have not already. Uh, check out Life in a Day 2020. And as always, stay weird.